Hi there! I chose to draw Henry today from Narrowboat Lane. Uh, he lives on a narrowboat as well. If you want to follow his adventures, check it out in the description below. The first thing I had to do was a little bit of sketching to get the proportions of Henry's face correct. And then I decided unusually to do the background first. I do, in a lot of my paintings, do the foreground first and I advocate that. However, Henry's a very light coloured dog so I had to, well, I felt like I should really start with the background first and I know that Henry is not the biggest fan of the water so I didn't want to put him near any water, I wanted to put him near a big kind of park so that's why I went with the greens in the background. Uh, so I then started with Henry's eyes because they are gorgeous and they are the main part of this photo and I thought if I mess up the eyes then I can start again <laughs> whereas if I start with all the other features which are slightly easier then I will be really cross if I mess up his eyes. color palette for Henry is very light so um, I got to start with this brown color and um, as you'll see as the video goes on I probably went over his eyes about five times so they look quite washed out at the moment and really light and that's because I kind of paint with the philosophy that you especially with watercolors you want to do it really light the first time and then you want to build the layers on top so there's a lot of drying time between each of these layers. So the first thing I did was start with the really light brown to begin with and then I'm just going over it now with a little bit of a darker brown and I kept checking back with the photo uh, you can see there in my hand just to make sure that I'm getting the colors relatively right and also making sure that the light's reflecting in exactly the right spot. If you're playing along at home and you're going to do Henry or you're going to paint your own dog uh, the ears are really interesting because you can just do them like they're geometrical shapes. The first thing I like to do is do the light part of the ear so on that ear it is a creamy kind of yellow whereas on Henry's other ear it's kind of a pinky grey and I'm going to come back a little bit later and fill that in so I make sure, because it's a really limited color palette for this dog, I make sure that I'm not going over it and mudding any of the colors, especially with the ears that are only going to have a couple of colors and with the eyes. As I start the nose, the thing I have to point out is that I'm incredibly nervous of doing dog's noses. And that's because they're this big giant black thing in the middle of their face and they're really hard to get right because they're wet and they're you know they're often the kind of first thing you meet when you meet a dog is their nose so I've sped this th this bit up because I got really nervous doing it and it is incredibly long to watch it in real time but Henry does have an adorable nose it was just really hard to do
feel like painting Henry is cheating a little bit because he is so adorable. So I went back for another pass at the ears here because um, I wanted to put in a little bit of a contrast and a bit of a shadow. So over on this ear I started with the lightest colour and what I'm doing here is just introducing the darker colour to kind of bleed and run a little bit to create a bit of shadow around where his ear is. And also that's kind of going to make his eyes pop out a little bit more and uh, make him look a little less washed out. Over on the other ear, what I'm adding in is the extra tiny bit of shade, so I have to be really gentle there. Back to Henry's nose and you can see I haven't sped this bit up how nervous I am just making this one black line and I'm going so slow and I'm thinking that this big giant black nose on the middle of the page is going to ruin the whole work. The worst, the absolute worst thing about doing a dog's nose is then doing the nostrils and I really struggle and you'll see here that I kind of just um and are a bit about it. Um, I've worked out a strategy, so if you have a strategy of your own, leave them in the comments, but I worked out this strategy that if I do the nostrils and then that kind of black circle dries, um, I can make the nose around the nostrils and that will add a little bit more depth. So that has been working for me <laughs> at the moment, so we shall see. Henry's little mustache here is um, coming along fine and I'm not that nervous about it. I put down a grey kind of um, template of where I wanted the black to go and now it's just a matter of blending the black in at the right place. So once you've got the angle of that nose correct you really just want to look at the shadow and there's only really three points of shadow on Henry's nose. There's a bit above one of the nostrils and two down where the nostrils actually are. So it's really important with the light hitting the eye that the same light is bouncing off his nose at the same time. So once all this black is applied, um, it's not, I'm probably going to go a shade darker so I need to let that dry. But while I'm doing some of the darker details, I'll take some of the black to his eyes, um, which are dry. And then if you notice, Henry has a kind of brown patch. A lot of interesting things happened here when I was doing this brown patch. I started with a light brown colour. And I, what I thought I was going to do is go over it three times, a light brown, and then build another one and build another one and build another one. But as I was painting it, I kind of realized that it was the wrong shade and that I was probably just not being brave enough with the color. So I introduced the ready brown and then I thought, oh, this is too light for Henry again. So I introduced the darker brown. and. In the end, I actually think blending it on the paper, which is what I do so, so often, in this case, blending it on the paper really worked. This brown patch, again, it's why Henry's just so fun to paint because his, the brown patch here really just adds that extra dimension to his coat and to the way he's kind of standing and looking. It's just, it's, it's just a dream to kind of think that compos compositionally it's already there for you.
thing I have learned painting a white dog because uh, they used to be my nemesis but now I actually quite enjoy painting white dogs the thing I have learned is that the color gray is your best friend so you can use it to help with every contour but you have to use it differently than shading like if you were to apply gray as a shade from a tree or something like that you have to use the gray as though it was a dark white and that's the trick of painting the white dog so I really enjoy that now I'm doing my last go over for Henry's nose and I think that this is the point at which you just really rely on your undercoats and I knew that my undercoats were really solid and the outlines were really solid that I had done and I just had to be brave in the end and apply the black and black is never fun as a watercolor artist to apply it the pigment sticks differently to the paper it goes everywhere it just needs one little bit of encouragement to take off and go everywhere so it is the last thing that I've applied maybe I should start dogs um, noses and then eyes first so that I'm less nervous next time I hope you enjoyed watching me paint Henry and I thank Carl and Mags for sending me the awesome photo. If you want to participate in this challenge then just click the link in the description and go to my Facebook page and join our little community and if you have liked this it would really help me out if you could share the video or if you like it and if you want to see more then hit the subscribe button. Thanks! Bye!